okay so yeah we are talking about gene, uh, gene manipulation and uh, we are we are going to see a step by step process or like how the uh, segments that we have learned by far are connected together to uh, make this uh, genetic modification happen then uh, genetic engineering is also called as genetic modification or genetic manipulation and it's the direct manipulation of an organism's gene using biotechnology. So a set of technologies used to change the genetic makeup of the cells, including the transfer of the genes within and across the species boundaries to produce a, a, a improved or noble organism. So you'll be manipulating the genetic makeup of an individual to make sure that you have a, a, Produced a novel or an improved version of the organ. Okay, so uh, that is what is gene manipulation is all about. And then the new DNA is obtained by either isolating and copying the genetic material of the interest using recombinant DNA methods, or by artificially synthesizing the DNA. So a construct is usually created and used to insert this DNA into the host organ. So the, this construct that we are talking about is nothing but your vector along with the DNA of interest. Okay, so that is what it is. Uh, so the first recombinant DNA molecule was made by Paul Birch in 1972 by combining DNA from the monkey's virus X4 with the lambda virus. So that is what he did, the very first recombinant DNA. Then. An organism that is generated through genetic engineering is called as genetically modified organism. So this is also very important. Just give me one second. Yes. So, organism that is gener uh, generated through genetic engineering is considered to be genetically modified, and the resulting entity is known as the genetically modified organism. So, we do have an experiment, uh, hands-on experiment. Uh, sorry, uh, means where you will be doing this experiment in our lab, or uh, where we'll be creating a genetically modified organism by using some restriction enzyme and then. Make uh, analyzing that genetically modified organism whether we are uh, able to uh, do any genetic modification or not. So that also we do through high media uh, the teaching kit only for genetically modified organisms. So the first DNA was uh, bacterium generated by Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen in 1973. Uh, we have heard the name of this uh, scientist before as well. Then genetic engineering has been applied in numerous fields, including research, medicine, industrial biotechnology, agriculture, and mainly. And the rise of commercialized genetically modified crops has provided the, provided the economic benefit, right, to the farmers in many different countries, but has also been the source of most of the controversies surrounding the technology. So it has helped in some way, it has, uh, it has many disadvantages also in other ways. That is what they're trying. So what is the process that is involved in when you're trying to make a genetically modified organism, when you're trying to manipulate the gene of that particular organism? So creating a GMO is a multi-step process. So the genetic engineers must first choose what gene they wish to insert into an organism. Right, mm -hmm. and this is driven by what the aim is for resultant organism and is built on earlier research. Okay, so what exactly you want to do with that uh, gene is will be depending on what you have researched in that particular area. Right, that you want to delete one gene, you want to insert another gene in replacement to that. Why you want to do that? Uh, what exactly will happen to that particular yeah. genetically modified organism and what advantages it will have that all you have to know. Then genetic screens can be carried out mm -hmm. to determine the potential genes and mm -hmm. further test the, then used to identify the best candidates. Okay. 
So you will be selecting the best gene as well, like which which what which one you would probably select in order to uh, make the construct, or you uh, which kind of gene you will select to make uh, to to insert into that particular vector. So that all depends on like uh, what all uh, that that all needs a very high uh, to to put screening of multiple genes. Okay. Where you will decide what kind of gene I have to select in order to insert into a particular make insert into a vector to make a genetically modified organism. So the next step is to isolate the candidate gene, and the cell containing the genes is opened and the DNA is purified. So how do you isolate a DNA? That would be all. Know. Then the gene is separated by restriction enzyme. You will be once the DNA has been isolated, you will be using restriction enzymes to cleave that gene to cut the DNA into finger fragments uh, or polymerase chain reaction to amplify up the gene segment. So you can amplify also this gene. So the polymerase chain reaction is nothing but if you have particular DNA segment uh, with the help of uh, uh, enzyme DNA polymerase enzymes uh and other uh, dntps you can amplify that particular uh, gene sequence okay so that process will be called as what pcr that is polymerase chain reaction which will amplify your gene, gene segment so if you have only one copy of that gene segment you can probably make thousands of copies of that particular gene and these segments can then be extracted through gel electrophores you can use gel electrophoresis to extract these segments out of uh, the gel electrophoresis. This gel electrophoresis technically everyone knows. So once we separate the segment on the gel electrophoresis, uh, uh, on the gel electrophoresis with the help of gel electrophoresis, you can uh, uh, um, uh, cut it with the scissors that particular gene of interest that you are willing to get and then you can isolate the DNA through that gel. Uh, that process can also be done. Okay, so if DNA sequence is known but no copies of genes are available, it will it will it can also be uh, artificially synthesized in the sense you know ki pe ye nucleotide hona chahiye, wahan pe wo nucleotide hona chahiye, but you don't have any gene. Uh, giving you that particular sequence of nucleotide. In that case, uh, you can also artificially synthesize the DNA. Okay? Once isolated, the, uh, once once isolated, the gene is uh, like once the DNA of interest is isolated, the gene is uh, ligated into a plasmid that is then inserted into the bacteria. That is the process that we have seen in gene cloning right now. So. Uh, the whenever whenever I'm calling DNA fragment or whenever these guys are calling DNA uh, this thing, uh, the only thing that you have to know is that uh, gene and the DNA are the same thing, right? So for uh, the DNA is uh, uh, made up of uh, no gene is made up of DNA itself. So that basic concept sometimes people are very confused with. So you have to know that. So whether I call it a gene that is to be inserted or whether I call it a DNA that is to be inserted, it is one and the same. Okay. Uh, uh, give me one second. So the plasmid is replicated. So we have to construct a vector and then insert that vector into the bacterium so that we can replicate that gene of interest. So the plasmid is replicated when the bacteria divide, ensuring uh, uh, unlimited copies of gene are available. Okay. So before the gene is inserted into the target organism, it must be combined with other genetic elements. And these include a promoter and the terminator region, which initiate 
and end the transport. So these genetics element also has to be there before you make sure that you are inserting that particular gene into the target organism. So, first of promoter who will start the transcription and then termination show, terminator region. When we say terminator region and uh, sorry, promoter region and terminator region is nothing but a small sequence of nucleotides which will be initiating the replication and another one will be stopping the replication. Then it should also have a selectable marker gene. Right, selectable marker gene kya rehta hai? Hume pata hai abhi it could be uh, the most commonly that we use is antibiotic resistance. So that is what is selectable marker gene. So uh, which is which in most of the cases confers to antibiotic resistance. So the researchers can also determine which cell have successfully been transformed. The gene can also be modified at this stage for better expression or effectiveness. So the manipulations are carried out using the recombinant DNA techniques and such as restriction digest, ligation and molecular code. So restriction digest is nothing but uh, using restriction enzyme, then ligating and then molecular code. So that is how you'll be constructing a gene of interest to be inserted into the bacteria. Then uh, that, 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 that is what you need. So you need a, a promoter, you need terminator region, you need selectable marker, and then you need a cloning vector. So the cloning vector should have origin of replication. That is what we have seen in the last couple of lectures of ours. So this is a sequence where the replication starts and any piece of DNA then linked to this sequence can be made to replicate within the host cell. And hence we are making sure that all this important aspects are present into the uh, cloning vector rather than uh, we uh, later uh, make it rather than putting them into the gene of interest okay so this sequence is also responsible for controlling the copy number of the links so then it should have selectable markers we know that what do you mean by selectable markers then you, uh, it should have the transformation. So transform, uh, it should undergo the process of transformation. So transformation is a procedure through which a piece of DNA is introduced into the host cell. So that is what is called as transformation, where you will be uh, having a piece of DNA which you have manipulated according to your will and wish, and then you are putting them into the bacterium or the host cell, okay? So this is the PBR322 uh, vector construct that we have seen in our last lectures. It has multiple cloning sites, it has selectable marker and it also has the origin of replication. And then inserting DNA into the host, okay, genome, host genome. So in plants, the DNA is often inserted using agrobacterium mediated recombination. So agrobacterium uh, mediated recombination is the most common type of a procedure that we use to insert the gene of interest into the plant cell. Okay, taking advantage of agrobacterium tDNA sequence that allows the natural selection of the genetic material into the other method include biolistics, where particles of gold and tungsten are coated with the DNA and the short, they are shot into the young plant cells and uh, electroporation. So basically, this is a method of directly making the nanoparticles of the DNA and then directly trying to do the target siting. Like you will be putting that DNA directly at the target site uh, through electroporation, which involves using an electroshock to make the cell membrane permeable to the plasmid, uh, plas uh, permeable to the plasmid DNA. So basically, you will be giving a little bit shock to those plant cells so that. Uh, pores will be made, uh, made into the cell wall and also in the nuclear wall, uh, nucleus uh, cell membrane. And then uh, uh, the DNA, the plasmid DNA can travel accordingly. Okay, so that is how the biolistics will be working. So due to damage caused to the cells and the DNA, uh, and the G DNA, the transformation efficacy of the biolistic and electrocular sheet Electroporation is lower than that of the agrobacterium transformation and microenvironment. So this procedure, it looks a little invasive. So hence the success rate of this particular procedure is not very high when you compare it to the uh, bacterial transformation and microenvironment. As only a single cell is transformed with the genetic material, the organism must be 
regenerated from that single cell and the and, and, and in, uh, in plants this is accomplished through the use of tissue culture so you only single cell will be transformed in the sense there are very that single cell selection has to be done very carefully and then you have to make sure that uh, you have you are the uh, you are making multiple copies of that particular uh, cell that has been modified and uh, in plants this, uh, this particular process of uh, uh, a, um, what you say multiplying your uh, output will be done to, with the help of tissue culture okay so the tissue culture is nothing but that you will be picking that one cell and allowing it to grow into an area where it will replicate make double copies triple copies multiply itself basically okay so that is what it is then selectable markers are used to easily differentiate transformed uh, from untransformed cells uh, that we know very well. And PCR, the southern hybridization and the DNA sequencing is conducted to confirm an organism contains a mutant. So PCR, we all know polymerase chain reaction, you can have the primers for that particular gene of uh, your interest. And you can multiply that particular gene with the help of the primers. Okay, and then uh, what PCR is exactly? What primers are exactly that we will be learning in the next semester? But uh, just to let you know that polymerase chain reaction needs DNTPs, it needs uh, polymerase DNA polymerase, and it also needs the primer sequences. Primer sequences uh, for the DNA uh, part of the DNA that you want to amplify. So if that particular part of DNA is there in your construct, it will be amplified with the help of the primers, the DNA polymerase and the DNTPs. And then when you run that particular PCR product onto the uh, agarogel electrophoresis, you'll be able to see the product. You'll see a very heavy band of the uh, PCR product cDNA uh, onto your uh, agarogel electrophoresis. Okay? So that is when you can confirm that uh, the uh, the recombinant DNA procedure has taken place uh, successfully, and uh, uh, it has incorporated the DNA of interest. You can also do the sudden blotting and DNA sequencing to confirm the uh, construct that you have made, whether it is uh, whether it has incorporated the DNA of interest in the uh, gene or not. So. You have bacteria, bacterial chromosome, you have plasmid, you'll be taking out the plasmid. You, you'll be isolating the gene of interest then putting it into the plasmid and then you are again going to insert this plasmid into the uh, bacteria and then that bacteria will be called as the recombinant bacteria. So this is a very simple procedure they have mentioned in the diagonal. Then applications in agriculture. So genetically modified crops. So application of the genetic uh, manipulation in uh, agriculture is you, may, you can make genetically modified crops. So crops have been developed to increase the production, increase the tolerance to abiotic stresses, alter the composition of the food, or to produce the novel products. So that is where you can use this genetically modified crops. Uh, they have high nutrient content resistant to the pest attack, etc. So that is that is the, that was the main reason uh, uh, people started using agrobacterium T uh, as their main uh, bacteria to make those genetically modified const constructs and insert them back into the plant because uh, that the first uh, experiment that happened after yeah, like you know the main goal was to protect the plants from the pest attack. Okay. So yes, <clears throat> the, 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 these are all the uh, uh, things that I wanted to let you know uh, guys in terms of genetic manipulation. So what do you exactly mean by gene manipulation and how exactly it works? So it's a longer procedure and it has a widespread application. Okay, so gene manipulation nowadays is done for many things like, you know, you want to uh, manipulate uh, human DNA, you want to manipulate the plant DNA, fish DNA, so many, many, many applications you have. And people are uh, working towards it, people are also working. See, right now, also, if you think about uh, COVID 19 disease and making a vaccine, and then 
uh, having that uh, RNA or DNA of that virus learned very thoroughly for what all purposes is to make sure that uh, you know that virus in and out and where exactly you can manipulate the, uh, the virus's DNA or uh, where exactly you can, um, what kind of medication you can use to attack that, uh, stru uh, that structure of uh, virus where you can, you know, uh, prevent the replication of that virus. So that, that is like, that is how the molecular thinking starts and that is how you have to think when it comes to uh, working uh, on a project at a molecular level, it's like which actually involves the molecular diagnostic. So uh, we'll be conducting this particular experiment of genetic, uh, what you say, genetically modified organism. Uh, in our class and we'll be uh, doing the gel electrophoresis once we do the PCR reaction for genetic. So basically we have a DNA of interest, we have primers, we have uh, uh, two genes that we want to insert and we want to later ch check that whether those genes are being inserted into the DNA of interest or not by using polymerase chain reaction method. Okay. So uh, this was it from my side for today. Are there any doubts from uh, you, guys, uh, you guys have? It's like, do you have any doubts? Have you guys understood like how exactly uh, whatever we thought like vectors and restriction enzymes, how they are exactly used in manipulating the gene? That is what is my main goal is to make you guys understand. Like, you know, how you will be doing the selection uh, and how you'll be taking the plasmid and then how you'll be making the construct and again put that back into the bacteria so that bacteria will reproduce itself and then uh, it will uh, will have multiple copies of gene nowadays we can uh, we have pcr reaction as well so you don't need uh, this particular recombinant bacterium maybe to have but if you are, if you, you can make multiple copies of the gene but if you want to have an enzyme made out of that particular gene or you want to make have the protein made out of that this particular gene that you have inserted, then you have to put them back into the bacteria itself so that you can that bacteria will grow, the proteins will be made, the uh, enzymes will be made with the help of transcription, translation, and uh, you can further isolate that uh, enzymes or the proteins from that bacteria, the transformed bacteria, right? Uh, recombinant bacteria. So this is the main, main important uh, thing that I want to tell you guys. I just wanted you guys to know. Okay. So uh, are there any doubts? Okay. So you guys have understood it very well, I guess. So we can we can we can go for a little bit kind of a uh, test for whatever we have learned. Just just few questions that I'll be asking you guys, okay? So, uh, what, what, do, what do you mean by ORI? You can type it in the chat box. What do you mean by ORI? I would like uh, chemistry people to give answers. What do you mean by ORI? O-R-I. Yes, origin of replication. But what do you mean by origin of, uh, of replication is where the replication will be starting. Okay, what are the three things a vector should have in order to uh, make a construct, a full proof construct? What are the three things that a vector should have? Yes, the origin of replication. Then write it together only. What are the three important things that uh, uh, this thing should have? Vector should have. Origin of replication, selectable marker, and one more thing. Yes, multiple cloning site. Okay, 
और मैं रेस्ट्रिक्शन साइड लाइक मल्टीपल रिकॉग्निशन साइड सिस्टम ठीक है देन व्हाट कैन यू गिव मी एनी एग्जाम व्हिच आर द रेस्ट्रिक्शन व्हिच टाइप ऑफ रेस्ट्रिक्शन एंजाइम्स डिटरमाइन द पैलिंड्रोमिक सीक्वेंसेस टू रेस्ट्रिक्ट द डीएनए which type of restriction enzyme determines the palindromic sequences palindromic sequences are nothing but mirror images right so which are the it's a uh, restriction enzymes which determines the yes type 2 very good sheetal it is type 2 restriction enzyme uh, which uh, determines the palindromic sequences and uh, what are the examples of type 2 restriction enzyme the most common example eco aur one and pst one right yes 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 so uh, and then second um, let me let me just ask you few more questions what are the different methods of uh, probe labeling labeling i'm asking about the labeling of the probes what are the different methods of uh, probe labeling radio labeling primary extraction is the processing of the probes like how exactly you would be getting a probe okay that is not uh, this thing what you say labeling part okay perfect so uh, chemi yes illuminescence fluorescent labeling antibodies that is how you will be labeling the probes yes so i guess so uh, we are very much through with the session i just wanted you to show this slide also which i'll be uploading on the this thing uh in this video gene isolation and manipulation so they, they have given the diagrammatic representation over here like how will you uh, do the this thing gene isolation and how will you make the construct and then how will you amplify that construct and then further how will you sequence that construct how will you go about sequencing it and then once you are done sequencing it how will you uh, read that and then if you want to amplify my making uh, cdna clones how how will you exactly do that so that is this is just a diagrammatic representation of all the uh, processes that we have and it also has that end experiment of uh, blue and white screening so this is also the blue ones are the one which have a uh, uh, no dna insert uh, because it cleaves the x gal that we will be adding whereas the white colonies are one, one which do not cleave the x gal x gal is a chemical which reacts with the uh, uh, media uh, or the dna product that has been released once uh, Uh, the dna is been recombinant and further taking making few enzymes through the process of replication of it or uh, what you say or uh, transcription or something like that so dna uh, so the white colonies are the one where the dna is present so this is how 
uh, we are also hoping that our uh, results we get this kind of results when we um, do this experiment next year okay so uh, yes uh, this is it from my side and next next lecture uh, we'll be learning about uh, transgenic animals okay and we'll be learning thoroughly about them and how exactly you can produce transgenic animals so uh, i'm signing off for now and if there are any doubts you guys can ask me right now dna rna hybrid sender is also a process of making the probes okay? not labeling of the probes okay so so i'm signing off for now i'll see you guys since you guys have lecture at 2 15 as well so take a break of 5 to 10 minutes and then you can join log in again i'll see you all bye